Hello and welcome to a little program I like to call Forgotten Franchises. Now, in this fran in this uh, <laughs> this show, I like to take a look at franchises, sports franchises, both minor and major league, uh, that through the years have become defunct. Uh, either the the uh, league itself or the franchise, or whatever, for one reason or another, through bad business decisions, or merely just uh, because of the uh, economy or whatnot, have gone defunct and are gone. Um, I'm going to try to avoid ones that have gone and come back, kind of like the Arena League, if I were to say like the Tampa Bay Storm or the Orlando Predators. Uh, they did come back, uh, and they do, you know, take their records and move them on. So, like, the Cleveland Browns kind of moved on, and they moved their records and everything. I'm trying to stay with ones that are gone, and or maybe forgotten through time, or, or maybe just... And what I really want to do is is uh, kind of remember them, go back with our memories, and just, just relive the great times that these franchises had. Um... Maybe if you have some stories about these franchises, about the ones, feel free to, to, to leave them down below. And uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, just look in the comments for email addresses and links and everything like that. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at the always uh, great to talk about XFL. And in particular, the Orlando Rage. Um, a, uh, a football team right there in the center of my home state of Florida, uh, who if there was a second season, I would have gotten season tickets because they were incredibly affordable. And actually the uh, brand of football that the Rage had all year long was much better than most of the product that, uh, that the XFL had. Um, first of all, uh, their, their colors, red, navy, uh, gold, and white. And uh, their head coach was former University of Florida head coach Galen Hall, a guy who really, really wanted to be an NFL head coach, never did get a chance to be one. Um, he was, uh, he was a, a, a great quarterback for Penn State way back in the 60s, um, was a great uh, offensive coordinator throughout the years, both with you know, Florida, head coach at Florida. He was uh, he was a, uh, a coordinator at, uh, in the NFL. He was a head coach in the NFL Europe. Uh, and then, of course, as the end of his career, he was the uh, offensive coordinator over at Penn State. Uh, just a great mind. I always wish that he had a job in the NFL. He never did. I mean, as far as a head coaching job, he deserved to have one. Uh, he was let go of Florida, I think, under the worst of circumstances. Um, but nonetheless, he was the head coach for the Rage, and he was the perfect head coach for the Rage. Um, he kind of it, it encapsulated that that view that Vince McMahon had. Well, not exactly, because Vince McMahon wanted to do that entertainment thing where he would have, uh, you know, the, the announcers getting in fights with the coaches and stuff. He didn't care about that. He just wanted to play football. And he got the perfect group of players. Um, uh, let's just take a look. They won the Eastern Division uh, in the one and only year, 2001, uh, when the year uh, when the, the, the XFL was in, in uh, play. Played in the Citrus Bowl, or as we like to call it here, the Citrus Bowl, because it's just a nasty, nasty place. It really is. It does get kind of gross after a while. Um, any of those late bowl games you see, you're always going to see it really gross there. Uh, their general manager, Tom Veet, uh, former Major League Soccer vice president, um, Head, uh, the uh, starting quarterback was Jeff Brom, a guy who I felt uh, got a raw deal with the Buccaneers. Um, I thought he, he had played with San Francisco, and he had a chance with uh, with the Buccaneers, and they kind of overlooked him. Um, I'm just looking right here at the uh, some of the, the statistics and whatnot. Uh, I'll get through this real quick. Um, basically, the team started off 6-0. and They were the hottest team to start off. They actually played real football uh, as opposed to some of the other teams. Um but when uh, Jeff Brom went down, they brought in Brian Kuklick, um, who was a good quarterback, but he he threw a lot of interceptions. Um, and they managed to get within a game of the uh, championship game, the million dollar game, but they lost in the playoffs. Overall, they had eight and three record, including the playoff loss. Um, just uh, just going to look at some of the players that were on there: Jeff Brom, uh, Brian Kuklick at quarterback. Um, they had. Let's see. Uh, running backs: Michael Black, Derek Clark, uh, Brian Shea. Uh, wide receivers: Mario Bailey, uh, who, who, uh, who really had a nice career. Uh, but never got through with the NFL. Uh, Diallo Burks, Kevin Swain, Lawrence Hart at tight end. Um, defensively: Andre Purvis, Omar Brown, Reginald Doster. 
uh, Stephen Fisher, Corey Gilliard, uh, Kelly Matalo, uh, Louis Riddick, Jay Taylor, who had uh, in and outs with the with the NFL as well. Um, Statistic, uh, statistical leaders having uh, Derek Clark with 387 rushing yards, 659 receiving yards for Diallo Burks, and uh, Kuklik actually ended up with 998 uh, passing yards uh, to lead the team. Uh, Galen, Call, uh, Galen Hall won the coach of the year, um, and uh, all XFL team, Jeff Brom, James Burgess at linebacker, and Jason Gamble at guard, all were on the all XFL team. Um, you know, for everything that was bad about the XFL, if you actually go back and watch the football games, the first three or four weeks are some of the worst football you will ever see in your entire life. It's horrible, um, with the exception of the Rage. I, I thought the Rage really had a good game plan. I think Galen Hall really treated them more like a football team than as a an entertainment source. And um, if you really watch the last, say, quarter of the season, including the million-dollar game. Yeah, it's good football. It's good, good football. It's like first few weeks of the NFL. You're going to have a, a lot of – there were a lot of injuries. There were a lot of – the league was run really weird, and uh, I don't think Vince McMahon really knew what he was doing. Um, I give him credit. I give NBC credit for, for making a, a run here. Um, it was never going to work. And, um, but, you know, part of me just appreciates it. And I would have definitely gotten season tickets, even if it meant going to Orlando and playing, going to the Shitress Bowl and having to watch, um, having to watch the game just because it was an affordable, wonderful time. Uh, fans always had a good time. They always had those, uh, cheerleaders that looked like strippers. I think they were, um, if you know any better, I mean, if you know that they weren't, feel free to comment below. Uh, I think some of them were. Uh, I saw some of those moves they were making, and I ain't seen that in an NFL stadium. Um, I wish I did. Uh, but nonetheless, I have fond memories of the uh, of the Orlando Rage. I have an Orlando Rage jersey. Uh, I will treasure it because it just reminds me of great times that were had uh, back then. And um, if it only if it was worth one year. Uh, so, hey, if you like this video, feel free to click like. If you don't, feel free to click dislike. Uh, comment below. Tell me that the XFL was shit, and I will agree with you. Um, but the Rage was just a fun team to watch. You know, share your memories down here. These were these were fun times. A lot of people getting really drunk. That was a college for me. That's just a lot of drunk people and just watching XFL football. Um, uh, if you have a suggestion of a team that you would like or a league you would like me to cover, uh, I got my email in the comments below or in the uh, the description. Feel free to email me. Leave a comment. Uh, I will I will cover whatever team you want me to that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I uh, I really I, I, I unlike my other shows on this channel I, I really enjoy this one. So um, hey, I suppose I will see you uh, the next time. I'll be covering a forgotten franchise.